Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to my shop. Today, we're gonna to talk about broaching. I made this shaft extension that needs a keyway cut into a blind hole. So, a broaching system like this won't work, and this problem arises for me every few months. Now I've found an easy solution, a homemade broaching fixture that fits right on the quick change tool post. This device is gonna cut that square keyway I need in this blind hole. And this is what I want to share with you today on metal tips and tricks. So let's head over to the lathe. Let me show you how it works. I call this a broaching fixture, even though I don't think it really is a broaching tool. But CNC machines broach very similar to this. But I think it to be a real broaching tool, um, you have to talk about the cutter. A cutter on a brooch has a series of progressively shaped teeth, and it's mounted on either a shaft or a um, die of some sort. And then that die or cutter is forced on or through the material to create a shape. This only has one tooth. So I think we should change the name to maybe a fixture slotting tool or maybe a mini shaper fixture. Okay, well the name doesn't matter. My inspiration of this came from the great encyclopedia, YouTube, where you can find several of these devices. And I looked at all the designs and then I started to create one of these to meet my needs. And you know, the word needs actually is code for whatever scrap material I have on hand. It's interesting how our scrap piles really dictate our engineering. And I call this phenomenon scrap pile engineering, which I use every day, and I'll bet you guys do too. Okay, let's talk about how this is crudely built. Um, this fixture is made up of two steel blocks. One is a cap that holds a pivot point. The other larger one has a groove milled in it for the half inch shaft. And on the opposing side of it is where the dovetail is to mount on this um, Aloris tool post. But you know, you don't have to mount it on a Loris tool post. You can mount it directly to um, your cross light if you want to. And at one end, is the cutting tooth. The other end is the pivot point and where the handle is, and that gives us the linear motion. Now, this video is not a blow-by-blow -blow of how to make this fixture. It's more of um, a show and tell. But I want to just give you a few measurements to help you out with your scrap pile engineering. So the travel on this is almost two and a half inches. We go for this first main pivot point at the center of the square rod. It's about two and a half, two and a half, three. It looks like the magic number is two and a half inches, but none of this is written in stone. You're gonna have to look at your scrap pile and figure out how to engineer it around what materials you have. So um, let's talk about the cutting tooth. Now, the cutting tooth I came up with actually has a negative rake to it or a negative angle. So if we take a piece of material, let's say this is a turning, and our cutter comes into it, this would be a neutral angle, this would be a positive angle, and this is a negative. And on harder to cut materials, you go in with a negative angle. And that's what I did on this. Also, the benefits of this negative angle is I actually have two negative angles. I have it pointed into it. So I'm able to cut in both directions. And that's a great advantage because this system is very slow. Something else I want to talk to you about is this rod here does not have to be square. That's just what I had on hand. You could make it round if you wanted to. Um, round has a lot of advantages because it's easier to fit and size where a square one, you have to work all four sides to get them to line up so it doesn't bind. But one of the great tricks to this, to help line up a shaft like this, 
I use grinding compound, and this is used for seating valves for like on a car engine. And you can just get this at your automotive parts store. And it was really great because I just put a little bit of this paste on here. It's just a little bit of this black paste. Put on there, there's a grid in it. And move this in and out, and it got rid of all those high spots. And it was just perfect. So that's this rig. Um, I want to say thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. If you really like them, replay it and then click on the ad. It's a great way to financially support my channel. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.